Well, thank you very much. You're Jim Meyer from Remax Gold. And as usual, we like to talk about something really fun, exciting, and positive. So yep. today we thought we'd talk about bankruptcy. And who better than to talk to us about bankruptcy with than our good friend Jim Felipe from the Felipe Law Firm. Give him a round of applause, Woo! everybody. Yeah. Woo! Hi, this is Jim T. Chong, the walk star, and we are extremely exuberated by this guest because he is an inaugural guest, and what better way to really continue the next show of The Power of Jim with, than with this guest here. This is Jim T. Chong, the walk star, and I'm with... Jim Meyer from Remax Gold, and we are thrilled to death because we always like to bring you positive, exciting and happy news. So that's why we're gonna talk about bankruptcy today with our awesome guest, Jim Filippi with the Filippi Law Firm. Great, and just fit in real quick, real quick, just to real, we're gonna be talking about bankruptcy and just uh, just kind of uh, what are the options in bankruptcy and if it's something uh, you should, uh, you know, should consider what situation there. But I just want to say that I, I want to, to market a new brand. It's called W and W. Okay. You think I'll get, you think I'll get uh, any uh, flack from that? No, I don't, I don't know. know. Or, 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 or we can call it um, right here. E and E or three and three so it kind of just depends multiple marketing so so we're talking about legal things so i'll get some legal advice from john just but no in all sincerity um a lot of people in the legal arena specialize in different parts of um, of, of the business depending on what you're trying to accomplish here and so today we're going to be talking about bankruptcy and this is a very important issue especially with what has been going on uh, most recently as well. So I'll just go ahead and just uh, turn this over to you to Jim Meyer to uh, just give a little more background about this guest before we jump right into this topic. Mr. Meyer. Well, thank you very much, Jim T. Chong. And I like to see uh, that you brought your props. Uh, Jim is also a prop comic. He's going to be on the road and uh, we can't wait to see his next, uh, uh, his next show. So, uh, a lot of uh, people have been out of work recently, especially like business owners might not have gotten the money they needed from their government uh, to keep afloat. And some people are shuttering their business forever. And some people are thinking about bankruptcy. Why would someone want to go bankrupt right now, Jim Felipe? Well, probably one of the things I should say, which I didn't say the last time, is that anything that I say on this show is not legal advice and shouldn't be construed as such. Uh, if you do have a specific question that requires the uh, skill of an attorney, uh, feel free to give our, our firm a call. We'd be happy to help. Uh, but we're all kind of going to, not kind of, we are going to a struggle right now. And uh, there's a lot of things uh, causing that. Uh, initially, it was the coronavirus and sort of some other current events that are affecting business owners nowadays. And, um, you know, it's a tough time. People are struggling financially and they're wondering how they're going to make next month's mortgage payment. And so they have to start looking at some options. Now, you know, the government's come in and, and extended unemployment benefits and provided some, uh, you know, one-time payments from uh, the IRS but those are going to start to wear off soon. And the questions of where next month's mortgage payment are gonna become louder and louder. In fact, the AmericanBanker.com came out with an article this morning that said, um, since 2008, the increase in bankruptcies are in line with uh, mortgage defaults and unemployment. So I don't think you have to be an economist to know what's going on. People, a tremendous amount of people have lost their jobs. That in turn has uh, resulted in some mortgage deficiencies. And so we're all coming into this environment where once the money from the government wears out, the last option then is to bankrupt, flush your debt and uh, move on. And so unfortunately we're back to where we were 12 years ago where we have to make some difficult choices and speaking with an attorney such as myself to really truly understand what bankruptcy looks like what the options are because it's not just a matter of 
you know, should I go bankrupt or not? It's there's different chapters. There's alternatives to bankruptcy. Uh, you know, negotiating with creditors, with lenders, you know, deferred payments. It's not a matter of just running directly into a bankruptcy and, and calling it a, uh, you know, calling that your decision for the day. So I wanted, to, that's kind of a long answer to what you said, but bankruptcy is certainly one of the options that you have available to you. But when you come to my firm, we discuss the entire package. So it sounds like uh, somebody might have a mountain of credit card debt and they might think they have to go bankrupt, but they come in, they talk to you, they answer a few questions. You do what some people don't do and you actually listen and you might say, hey, I'm going to help you guys negotiate this $100,000 in credit card debt down to something that's that's uh, uh, you can take bite-sized pieces out of and pay it off in X number of years, and you're not going to have to go bankrupt. There's also um, people have these uh, liens on their houses that you can negotiate, uh, like a second mortgage. Uh, can you explain that? Yeah, absolutely. We'll unpack that just a bit. I want to make sure that everybody knows that we're not an order taker. You don't come in our our uh, firm and fill out a you know a menu like you're ordering a sandwich and say you know I'll take the chapter seven today. Uh, we seriously have you sit down with us, discuss what's going on in your life, make sure that you know bankruptcy truly is the best option for you. If there are other options, we always suggest those. Make sure that you explore those before you take the the bankruptcy option, because really bankruptcy is kind of that last stand, the, you know, before you, um, you know, have explored all your other options. So we truly do listen and we figure out, you know, I've spent many years in the real estate finance industry. And so, um, you know, I've seen other options that are available out there and I make sure that we explore those. Um, one of those, if you go into say a chapter 13 bankruptcy, you know, this is kind of, kind of topic, you know, top of mind right now is the mortgage deficiencies values may start to, to be affected by this. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people running up to this coronavirus issue, taking out at home equity loans, cashing out their mortgages, doing, doing those things, pulling money out of the equity of their home and using that for other purposes. And so now they're left with, you know, a home that could be undervalued. And so, you know, if, if the certain circumstances fit, there is an opportunity to strip a second lien off of a home if you have one that's undervalued and um, continue on just paying on the, the first mortgage. So that's a super highly technical legal strategy that I've put into about a 10 second explanation. So there's a lot more to it, but that is the end result that does happen. Now, well, let me ask, yeah, go, um, you know, I, I want to, oh, I want sorry, to, go ahead, GMT. Charles. All right. I'm you know what? <laughs> this, this is really good. This is an exciting topic. You know, it's one that is infused by the nature of what it is with a lot of emotion, mm -hmm. a lot of heartache potentially. And bankruptcy, as you mentioned, is probably the final alternative. Is that correct? You're absolutely correct. And you're tr you're correct in the fact that it's emotional. Um, you know, I'm kind of an emotional guy. I've always, you know, wore my heart on my sleeve and a client was in my office last week. You know, his business went from making five, six, seven thousand dollars a week to making maybe a thousand dollars a week. Mm -hmm. And uh, he doesn't know how to how what tomorrow looks like. We were both kind of shedding a little tears together. And, you know, it was a very emotional experience because I felt what he was feeling because we're all in this together. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it felt really good to be a part of his solution in, in making this all better for him. Yeah. And sometimes it is better to. Uh to wipe the slate clean. And you know, there's a statement, um, you know, it's fish or cut bait. Sometimes it's really, it's really tough when you have to make that decision. Can I really move forward with it and go full bore or just, just have to cut my losses? And you know, one of the things that uh, I think about when I think about bankruptcy is the fact that, okay, no one's gonna be able to come after us, right? And so that's why, that's part of my perception of why people will go uh, and and go um, and decide to um, go go for this option here. Is that true that uh, once you file for bankruptcy, the government can't touch you, no one can really touch you? Um, I know there's a lot in terms of your answer to that, but uh, I'd love to be able to have you clarify that because there might be some myths here regarding uh, bankruptcy. So what, what really happens in bankruptcy? Well, like any good attorney, it's not going to be a yes or a no, right? Yeah. So uh, I didn't create the law, so this is not me as an attorney kind of uh, exacerbating this, but uh, the, the reality of it is, is that 
uh, a majority of your debts are dischargeable. There are some that are not. Um, student loans, which is a big topic uh, running up to this. Now it's become a bigger topic. Student loans are not dischargeable. Uh, if you have a judgment from someone that sued you and they've claimed fraud, they that debt cannot be discharged. Uh, you know, certain you know, sometimes you can, you know, this is one of the big, you know, myths that are out there. You can't bankrupt against income taxes. That's 100% incorrect. There are situations where you can bankrupt against mm -hmm. income taxes. The I guess the, the true answer to your question is it's not black and white. It needs to have an attorney like myself evaluate the situation Absolutely. and see if, you know, if you're truly going to bankrupt and walk away and everything's going to be gone. You know, I look at bankruptcy kind of as a tool for building wealth and people say like, Jim, what are you talking about? I'm filing bankruptcy. Well, I'm not, the last thing I'm thinking about is building wealth. Uh, my philosophy is this. You have, you know, like Jim Meyer just said, $100,000 in credit card debt. Well, if you spend the next few years trying to pay that $100,000 in credit card debt off, you know, it takes, what, 25 billion years to finally pay that off, and you're, you end up spending $150,000 to pay off $25,000 in debt. Now, don't quote me on those figures or just be over-exaggerating, but you see sure. what I'm talking about. If you were to flush that debt through a bankruptcy, take that money that you would have thrown at this credit card debt and start investing it. Now you're building, building wealth. So when I say, Hey, use bankruptcy as a tool to build wealth. That's what I'm talking about. And it always catches people off guard because it's not something they've ever mm -hmm. associated together. With. Yeah. And in no way are you just saying, Hey, and just get bankrupt money. Right. I think there's a lot into what you just said in terms of building, you know, wealth through. Yeah, that. of course. I mean, yeah. Just to clarify for people. Resort. It's kind of the, uh, you know, there's no other options. I've explored everything else. There's nothing that I can do to, to, to support my family. And so right. I've chosen bankruptcy. And, yeah. you know, I don't want to look at the world in a, you know, cap, you know, cup half full type situation. I've gone through this unfortunate financial experience, but I'm going to make this a positive experience for me and my family. That's the best way to look at it is that, you know, you can come out of this truly building wealth for yourself and your family. So Jim uh, for DP, uh, uh, back in December, I mean, we were trying to sell a house. Uh, we represented buyer. The seller at the last minute found out about some lien that they had. I guess a silent second or something that didn't, where they didn't. They thought the balance was much higher or much lower than it really was, uh, and then the, the deal didn't go through. Um, and I'm blaming a lot of other people, but that doesn't really matter. So. In this situation, could you have consulted with these people and said, hey, you got this lien, we can remove it from the house, you could sell the house, and you can work on sell paying these people off later? So when you talk about stripping a lien, like a second lien off a home, it's tied with a Chapter 13 bankruptcy, and the Chapter 13 bankruptcy itself runs three to five years. So it's not one of those, you know, come into my office today, tomorrow you're, you've, you know, removed your second mortgage. It's a, it's a long-term strategy. And so you can't look at it as, you know, I have this house that I'm trying to sell. This lien popped up out of nowhere. Um, Jim's going to come in on his, you know, stallion, save the, save the day. I wish it were that way. But yeah. uh, again, it's, it's not that quick. And it is a long-term strategy. But, you know, it sets people up for the possibility of selling in the future where they may not have been able to before. And that is kind of the big key here is that, you know, you remove this fifty, hundred, hundred fifty thousand dollars second. The amount of time that you can turn around and sell the home once the economy and the housing market recovers is a lot shorter than had if you kept a hold of that second mortgage. And it allows you to make, you know, gives you more mobility if uh, mm -hmm. if, you, if you've done that because now you have the ability to sell years in the future or years uh, sooner than you would have in the future. So. Um, but no, to answer your question, unfortunately, I couldn't have saved that day. In this situation, I can always call, you know, reach out to the lien holder and negotiate a settlement. Um, there are um, strategies there that I can work through with that lien holder to make sure that, um, you know, you don't lose a set like that. Do those lien holders always talk to you or are there times where they will just ignore you? You know, there's always times where people are going to ignore us. Um, one of the biggest things with the lien is it depends on what kind of lien it is. A voluntary lien where, you know, they've 
you know, signed a note or a deed of trust, or is it an involuntary lien where they've been sued and the, and the lien's been attached um, through the, the judgment process? And it really depends on how that process works and the, um, you know, the situation the lien holder's in. If it's a private lien holder, maybe they're desperate for some money. You know, if it's a $10,000 lien, <clears throat> maybe I'm willing to take 5,000 to, you know, because I need $5,000 right now to make my mortgage next month. And, and I might be willing to take a little bit less to get, get that money in my pocket rather than waiting another several years before I get paid. So it's one of those situations where I always say, you know, come talk to me. You know, my consultations are typically uh, free depending on, you know, what the, the topic of that is. And certainly in that situation, it would have, it would have been a free consultation for me to sit down and say, hey, this is, you know, your situation. One of the things that we can do is, is X or Z or Y. So you get what I'm talking about. Yeah. And, you know, right now, specifically during this time period, as things are finally loosening a little bit, you know, um, are you offering virtual appointments or is it completely walk in or how are you conducting those? Yeah. So we've always been virtual. We even before, you know, Zoom was the cool thing to do. Uh, we were offering virtual appointments because we realized that people have very busy lifestyles, especially, you know, when you're having you know, parents, you know, you know, a couple that has children that are working and uh, we've had, uh, you know, clients go from A through Z, all virtual. Um, the only thing they had to come in for was to sign the estate plan at the end. Um, we've done bankruptcies where everything is virtual. Some people I've not even met in person. I've done um, everything. Uh, the bankruptcy process totally over the phone or virtually. The court appearance nowadays, the, the bankruptcy court is, is having those appearances over the phone. So literally, you don't have to leave your living room to mm -hmm. file the bankruptcy. And so it's a really cool um, time because the legal industry is very slow to accept and adapt to technology. Mm -hmm. And coronavirus has fundamentally shifted that. Mm -hmm. And we were probably no less than five years ahead in the legal industry in adapting technology. And I, I you know, the, the silver lining in the cloud of, of coronavirus is they've been forced to do that. And so I hope some of the stuff sticks where you can appear in court over the phone or virtually uh, through Zoom and um, make the access to the legal system a whole lot easier for people. Yeah. And, you know, dealing with this, this topic on bankruptcy, as we mentioned, it's something that is embarrassing. It's something that's hard for people to really um, surface themselves and to ask for help sometimes. And it's kind of interesting, you know, just to watch some people go through their different phases of life, right? And so what are the people um, that, that you're seeing? What, what, what are they saying? You know, I'm sure there's a certain trigger point where they say, wow, I really need to get help. And, you know, for those that are kind of on the verge, right, I, of course, we're going to encourage them to at least find, I mean, it's free, free consultation, just to at least find out where they are at, right? So when is a good time for somebody to start checking into this? What, what, what are some of the signs, if you can give any of those, of what you see? This is a good time to reach out to somebody that can guide you in this arena of pain. Well, Right. So the, the sooner the better, really, because your options start to diminish the longer you wait. If you wait until your creditors are suing you, your home is in active foreclosure, meaning that they've sent out the default notices and, you know, there's a sell date, you know, the junior foreclosure sell date scheduled, uh, your your options have diminished. Now, if you you start feeling like you feel that pressure and I, I think it's different for everyone because uh, we all have a different tolerance. We, we all know our personal financial situation better than, you know, say someone like me. But the minute you really start feeling like, I don't know if I can handle this, this is not feeling, you know, right. I would say that would be the preferable time to reach out to someone like me to schedule a consultation because then your options are a whole lot uh, more than had you waited six more months when, you know, kind of the noose is, is, is tightening around you. And, um, you know, there are things that I can do as an attorney to, you know, stop those foreclosure sales, stop the you know, judicial lien enforcements, so those type of things. Um, but, you know, it's one of the, you don't want to have to rush into this stuff because it's going to cost you more money. Uh, it's going to cost you more stress. And, 
you know, there's, there are better ways. And, you know, I hate to say this, there are better ways to file for bankruptcy and, and, you know, doing it when uh, you're not in that, you know, final moment stage of, you know, I'm about to get kicked out of my house is, is not the time to do it. If you found yourself in that position, you know, we can help, but you know, the preferable time is, is earlier than, than you probably would expect. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh -huh. So uh, Jim Filippi, if somebody uh, wants to meet with you tomorrow, the next day, whatever, and they want to bring uh, their carcass into your, your office and sit down, what, what other stuff do they, what kind of documentation do you want to see? So when we first meet, the only thing that I ask for is a government ID so that I can verify that you are who you say you are because we're eventually going to run a credit report as part of the uh, bankruptcy process. Um, but really and truly, any documents you have, if you've been served with a you know a notice about being sued or you have a judgment uh, or foreclosure proceedings have begun, <clears throat> I say bring those documents in. But really and truly, mm -hmm. that first initial consultation is you know, we talked about it, it's a free concept. It's more or less like a education seminar where we discuss, you know, your personal situation, what's going on with you. And then I give you options and we just, we kind of discover if there's other alternatives to bankruptcy and put other professionals in play. You know, if, if a short sale is a better way to proceed on a, on a property, let's say, you know, I, I would get you involved in that situation and, and get the short sale process started. Uh, you know, if, uh, you know, if they have the ability to refinance, I would get a mortgage lender in, involved to, you know, see if we can refinance, pay off debt. Um, so there, there are some other options where I would bring in other professionals that would help. And ultimately, if it's bankruptcy is the only part of the process, then we begin that. <clears throat> and we've prided ourselves on being, you know, virtual, you know, paperless. We're also, you know, in person, hand in hand. So if you're more comfortable bringing in those documents, we collect so any way you want to send us documents, we collect it. <clears throat> Most of our bankruptcy, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. Most of our bankruptcy is a virtual uh, practice where you will be given a, a online portal. You'll be able to fill in all your information, upload your documentation securely so it's not traveling in, in over the internet where some hacker can steal it. Um, so that first initial consultation is really just very bare bones you know, bring in whatever you got and we'll, we'll go from there. And uh, where, so they could be virtually, they could be anywhere in California then, correct? Virtually, especially now because of the, um, you know, the way the courts are operating over the telephone with what they call the 341 creditors hearing, which is that court appearance that you have in a bankruptcy. However, there are some, uh, some requirements on where you actually end up filing your bankruptcy. But um, if you're listening to this and you're in an area that uh, isn't covered by the Eastern District of, of California, which is where I, I typically practice bankruptcy law, um, we, we do cover you know, the Northern District, which is the Bay Area um, and, and points south of that. So uh, we can handle all of that. If you're in Southern California, I would probably defer you to a bankruptcy attorney down there, but I would certainly be more than willing to help you out and guide you through that process too. And, uh, and so you have two offices here. Uh, remind us again where they are, please. So our main office is here in Rockland. This is our, uh, our what we call our headquarters <laughs> for the Fullaby operation. Uh, but we have a satellite office in Fairfield where a good portion of my, my previous clients from my uh, past life are, are located. And so we'll always have a presence in Fairfield one way or another. And so we kind of cover everything in between. Wonderful. Well, you know, it's all about planning. And, and I know that there's a lot of things that uh, we could talk about. You know, we could talk about the the aspects of planning and just putting together estate plans and trusts, which, you know, I know you're, you, you, you're a wealth of information as well there. Um, and, you know, really going all the way to this whole subject of the, the bankruptcy um, alternative as well. And so, you know, as people are doing their plan, you know, um, would you recommend they visit you regardless? Because it seems like you can kind of do both ends of it, you know, since you do specialize in, in a couple of different arenas here. Right. And one of the reasons why I set up my practice the way I did is, is covering both estate planning and bankruptcy is that I am going to be here no matter what happens to you. 
mm-hmm. that whether it's a positive thing, like, you know, you, you have wealth you've built and now you need to make sure that your legacy lives on beyond uh, whatever happens to you. Or if it's, you know, something that's happening now, you've lost your job and you're having some hard financial times. I want to be there for anything that happens to you and be able to be your resource. And, you know, sometimes, like I said, even the shoulder that you cry on and, um, mm-hmm. You know, I want to be there to support and, and, you know, add value to your life. So no matter if it's that or, you know, bankruptcy or estate planning, we're here to make sure that, uh, you know, we take good care of you. you know, so we- now what if Jim Chung's girlfriend just left him and he wants to just cry on your shoulder? It, what do you charge for that? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, for something like that, we may just pay it in uh, beers at the bar and, uh, you know, have a good time that way. Oh, okay, great. Just, just, just take care of the beer, right? And so, um, you know, in all sincerity, that's you know, the whole thing is, is that um, it is, you know, I'm, I'm licensed in the financial arena as well in retirement, income tax free retirement and protection. Um, and Jim, I know just with what you do in real estate, our biggest thing is start to build the relationship, you know, beforehand before something happens, because you know it's a lot easier if you are responding rather than reacting to a scenario, I'm sure, I'm sure, uh, Jim, you, uh, Jim Felipe, G- JF will call you. Um, it's really a lot easier if you kind of already know the path that people are traveling than to try to come in a panic mode, maybe not in the ideal time. You're caught off guard. There's a lot of uncertainty to really build those relationships and build that roadmap. And it's not just about, planning for the, the the bad part of things, but also for the uh, positive things, you know, just being able to have that strategy, you know, in terms of real estate, you know, you're going to want to build a relationship. If you're in the Fairfield, Vallejo area, actually you cover a very large area, greater Sacramento area. I know you just sold a home not too long ago out there. Again, you know, you're going to want to build that relationship with uh, perhaps Jim. So the gym and I, I tell you, I like the word that you said, the trifecta is here to really help you. But in all sincerity, this whole aspect of just what we're talking about, you know, um, credit, you know, just just even dealing with credit. It used to be kind of almost taboo to not have reasonable credit. But right now, unfortunately, because of the way it is, um, it's more common than you might think. Bankruptcy, how common is it right now? Jim, from what you've seen, is it is it getting more common, more in the mainstream with everything that's gone on? You know, it's it's we're calling this the calm before the storm. The industry experts are saying that there is a tsunami of bankruptcies coming. Um, the calm is because the the government, through their uh, you know their actions with with the bailout uh, laws that they put in place, you know, kind of delayed some of this stuff from happening because. You know, unless you're able to jump right back on your feet and, and start going again, you know, the extra six months of unemployment or the $1,200 we got isn't going to last you very long and, and you're going to end up in bankruptcy probably anyways. So they are going to start increasing. But you know what? You know, there's been, you know, you've talked about it, the stigma of bankruptcy. And the, the one good thing that came out of the Great Recession from 12 years ago is that so many people went through this that stigma that, you know, you're, you're a poor person, you're, you're, you have, you know, terrible financial acumen and, you know, therefore, you know, you know, you're a bad person for filing bankruptcy. That kind of stigma is no longer part of um, the thought process anymore. There are still some people that come in with that, that thought and, and we take some time to, to work through that. And I remind them, I'm like, look, you know, credit cards, don't charge you 25% interest because they think they're going to be paid back a hundred percent of the time. And so we all kind of collectively pay into this bankruptcy insurance. So the credit card companies are never walking away with, you know, a situation where, you know, they got their hands in their pockets and we've taken away their lunch money. They've insured themselves against this stuff. You know, this, this thought process, I don't want to screw over the banks. Listen, this show is probably beyond the scope of that, but yeah, absolutely. banks and uh, you know, the, the banks haven't been very kind to the consumer. So don't worry about, you know, the banks they're they're They fully have taken care of themselves and you really shouldn't be ashamed by finding yourself in this situation. It happens to everyone literally from the top up, you know, when we talk about their president all the way down to, you know, us normal people, everybody in between is, is run into financial situations and sometimes those have turned into bankruptcies. And so it is nothing to be ashamed about whatsoever. 
Great. Well, you know, I know, you know, as we end this out, we, we hope that you're thinking, considering uh, either building your wealth, maintaining your wealth, protecting your wealth, or uh, protecting, creating a new a new uh, beginning if you need to. And definitely feel free to uh, contact any of us. But, you know, for if you're dealing with uh, bankruptcy, uh, you might want to consider contacting uh, the Flippy Law Firm. And so the information will be given here as well. We'll put it in the post as well. And Jim, can you make sure you put it in the post here? No, it's Jim. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Jim, um, Jim Meyer, any final thoughts for people before we end out here? Well, thank you, Jim Filippi, for coming back on the show, and you're on your way to becoming the biggest guest we've ever had, so thank you very <laughs> much. And uh, I just want to say that uh, anybody out there listening to this, uh, if you've got money and you need to, maybe you're, you're probably worried about the future, uh, you might want to talk to Mr. Chong about uh, shifting where that money is. Um, if you are... Uh, if you've got no money and uh, you're afraid uh, of uh, going to debtor's prison, please call our friend Jim Felipe right now. He is a shoulder to cry on. If maybe you got in over your head, you've got that $800,000 house and the payment is too high and you want to move down to a $400,000 house, this would be a great time to do that. And I would love to help you. Or maybe the what you owe on the, the house is more than what it's really worth right now i could still help you do a short sale and we, the three of us together uh no matter what your problems are pretty much i think we we're gonna listen 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 and help 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 am i right absolutely and you know um uh mr meyer um yes. you know the whole thing is is that uh you know what one one quick thing you know i did have uh, a client that was going through some stuff with their mom and you were very instrumental and helpful. And so even if you just have a question, you know, you, maybe you're uncertain about something, whether or not, you know, you have a realtor or not already, you might want to contact Mr. Meyer because definitely uh, in, in all sincerity, he can give you some great advice. He's been in this arena for, I think, a couple decades already. Um, we'll try to guess your age. But, uh, but in all sincerity, you're going to want somebody that's experienced, honest, and really is on your side. And uh, Jim Meyer is a very direct, really uh, efficient realtor that will get the job done. And so uh, I really recommend that you at least talk to him whether or not you have a realtor. Start building the rapport with the people you need to to where you want to get to the next stage. So, Mr. Felipe, I know you might have some things that you want to leave us with before we end the show. I uh, just want to second, you know, I, I don't know that you know this, but uh, Meyer and I used to be uh, partners back in the day doing uh, real estate together. We, we a short time, we ran a team together at the at Remax Gold there. And so um, I know him personally and have worked with him for a long time and I can, uh, definitely second everything you just said about how fantastic he is as an agent. So, um, you know, and to kind of uh, piggyback on what a few of things you said as well is that, you know, do it soon because you want to build that rapport now while you're thinking clearly, because, you know, when you're in a tough situation, you're, you're not thinking uh, clearly, you're probably more emotional than you normally are and you make uh, decisions that aren't really rational. And so if you do it, you know, sooner, you can build a rapport with someone that you end up trusting. And then that whole uh, process that you go through, it's going to be so much better for you than had you done it irrationally and just, you know, an emergency type situation. But other than that, you know, I, I really appreciate you guys having me on, you know, as the inaugural guest of the Power Old Gym mm -hmm. and, you know, I did coin the phrase of the gym trifecta. And I think that, that is, you know, today's show kind of illustrated the trifecta, the power of that trifecta. And, um, you know, whether you're, you know, in this situation that we're in now and you're excelling at, you know, financially or you're going on some hard times and everything in between, I think all three of us can can help uh, your add value to your life. And um, it's been exciting watching your show grow. And thank you for having me again. Great. And, you know, 
as you think about your life, it is very true. You know, we, we have a lot of fun here. Sometimes we, we, we joke around, but it's a very serious thing to get things in order. And so we want you to consider just where you want to be and really to plan towards where you want to be. It really is uh, an important decision to be able to plan. And Alan Lakin said it best in his quote. He said, planning is taking the future, bringing it into the present so that you can do something about it now. And so this is Jim T. Chong, the walk star, along with Jim Meyer from Remax Gold and our awesome guest, Jim Filippi with the Filippi Law Firm. And you're going to want to continue watching us with the trifecta on the power of Jim. Jim and Jim. Have a great one. Bye-bye. Jim is a pretty big